Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we'll explore a practical method for determining the area of coverage of fire sprinklers in accordance with NFPA 13 requirements. Understanding sprinkler coverage is essential for designing effective fire protection systems, ensuring safety and complying with standards. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear and structured approach to calculate coverage, making it easier to apply in real-world scenarios. So, let's dive in. NFPA 13 introduces the S by L method for determining the protection area of coverage. In this method, S represents the spacing along the branch line, determined by measuring the distance between sprinklers or the nearest wall. The larger value, either twice the distance to the wall or the distance to the next sprinkler, is used as S. Similarly, L represents the spacing between branch lines. It is calculated by measuring the perpendicular distance to the sprinkler on the adjacent branch line or the nearest wall. Again, the larger value, either twice the distance to the wall or the distance to the next sprinkler, is used as L. Let's see how we can apply the S by L method to determine the coverage of the blue sprinkler in this figure. To calculate S for the blue sprinkler, we need to compare two distances. The distance to the adjacent green sprinkler is 15 feet. Twice the distance to the left wall is 14 feet. Since S is defined as the larger of these two values, we select 15 feet as the spacing S for the blue sprinkler. Now let's determine the L for the blue sprinkler. To find L, we examine two possible measurements. The first is the perpendicular distance to the red sprinkler on the adjacent branch line, which is 10 feet. The second is twice the distance to the north wall, which comes out to 5 feet. Since L is defined by the larger of these two values, the correct spacing L for the blue sprinkler is 10 feet. Now that we have determined S and L, we can calculate the coverage area. Multiplying S by L, we find that the blue sprinkler covers a total of 150 square feet. If we draw the coverage area of the blue sprinkler, we identify two key points. First, the coverage area of sprinklers is rectangular in shape. Second, the sprinkler is positioned at the center of this rectangle. When designing a fire sprinkler system, obstruction rules such as the beam rule and the three times rule must be considered, along with maintaining a safe distance from heat sources. These factors often result in sprinklers being positioned non-uniformly. In such cases, applying the S by L method becomes more challenging. In the rest of this video, we will introduce a general approach called the sketch base method. This method helps determine sprinkler coverage areas in situations where sprinklers are positioned non-uniformly or where the piping has an irregular shape. Before introducing the sketch-based method, let's take a moment to review the S by L approach again. The intent of NFPA 13 in defining directions along the branch line and between branch lines is to establish two perpendicular reference axes. As we all know, the orientation of the piping does not influence the sprinkler coverage area. Therefore, in the sketch-based method, the piping network is ignored, allowing us to focus solely on the sprinkler positioning and coverage. Let's explore the sketch-based method through three examples, progressing from simple to complex. We'll see how this technique aligns with NFPA 13 and learn how to apply it effectively. In each of our three examples, we'll calculate the coverage area of the blue sprinkler. In the first example, the sprinklers are uniformly spaced, making it easy to find the coverage area using the S by L method. The distance from the blue sprinkler to the sprinklers on either side, left and right, along the branch line is 10 feet, so the S is 10 feet. Similarly, the distance for the L, which is the distance to the sprinklers above and below, is also 10 feet. Therefore, using the S by L method, the coverage area of the blue sprinkler is 10 times 10, which equals 100 square feet. 
Now let's determine the coverage area of the blue sprinkler using the sketch-based method. As we discussed earlier, this method allows us to ignore pipe roots. Remember, sprinklers share the floor area they protect, with each sprinkler responsible for a specific portion. So the first step in the sketch-based method is to define the floor area that each sprinkler is responsible for. In other words, each sprinkler protects the space between itself and neighboring sprinklers, effectively covering half the floor area between them, with the adjacent sprinkler covering the other half. To determine the floor area the blue sprinkler is responsible for, we'll consider each surrounding sprinkler individually. Let's start with the red sprinkler to the left. First, draw a line connecting the blue sprinkler and the red sprinkler. Then, draw a line perpendicular to that line, exactly halfway between the two sprinklers. This new line is the perpendicular bisector. The area to the right of this line is the responsibility of the blue sprinkler, while the area to the left is the responsibility of the red sprinkler. We need to repeat this process with each sprinkler adjacent to the blue sprinkler to determine the area it is responsible for protecting. After completing the process, we'll find that the area the blue sprinkler covers is rectangular and the sprinkler is located precisely at the center of that rectangle. Knowing this allows us to calculate the sprinkler's coverage area. In the second example, the sprinklers are slightly non-uniformly spaced. However, the S by L method remains applicable. In this case, S is 12 feet and L is 10 feet, giving us a sprinkler coverage area of 120 square feet. Let's try using our sketch-based method to find the area covered by the blue sprinkler in this situation. You'll notice the area is still rectangular, but this time the sprinkler isn't located right in the center. In situations where the determined coverage area does not have a rectangular shape, or the sprinkler is not located at the center, we should find the smallest circumscribing rectangle, also called the bounding box, with the sprinkler located exactly at its center. For this example, finding the bounding box is straightforward. We just need to shift the left side of the rectangle one foot to the left, and the sprinkler will be centered in the new rectangle. Therefore, the sprinkler's coverage area can be calculated by multiplying 12 by 10, which gives us 120 square feet. That's the same as what we found with the S by L method. In the third example, the sprinklers are spaced non-uniformly, making the S by L method challenging to apply. Therefore, we'll use the sketch-based method to determine the blue sprinkler's coverage area. As we explained earlier, we'll first ignore the piping and then find the area the blue sprinkler covers by drawing perpendicular bisectors. As you can see, the blue sprinkler's coverage area is definitely not a rectangle, so we need to find its bounding box. This can be a time-consuming and complex task, especially without the help of a computer. Software can automatically draw a circumscribed rectangle, calculate its area, and then rotate the rectangle slightly. It repeats this process, drawing, calculating, rotating, until it finds the bounding box. NSVCAD software has a command that applies the sketch-based method and automatically calculates S, L, and the coverage area of sprinklers in just a few seconds. After running the Find ACA app, the software calculates the S, L, and the coverage area of the sprinklers. If any of these values exceed the predefined thresholds, the app doesn't show the coverage of non-compliant sprinklers for easy identification. You can download this software from nsvsoft.net. Thank you for watching. For any further clarification or questions, please feel free to contact me.